Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, FA Well Centers. Let's talk about candida, yeast, gut infections, all these things that you hear about. People have been hearing about candida for years and years and years. And is it really a thing? Is it something you need to worry about? Is it something you need to look for? And, and what is candida? So welcome, Dr. Ben here, FA Well Centers. We get to the underlying root cause of what is actually going on in somebody's body. And sometimes that is candida. Sometimes that is yeast, sometimes that is gut issue but you've got to figure out what it truly is. You can't just start throwing random things at people. So welcome, uh, wherever you are, all over the country, all over the world, pop down below, let me see ya. Uh, and if you've got any questions, any experience, what you have done with Candida that maybe made a difference in your life or someone you love one. So Candida, let's get into it. So Candida is going to be this yeast overgrowth yeast infection and it can be a lot of different places a lot of people think oh it's in my gut and i got candida in my gut and that's it but candida can be a lot of different places it can be in our sinuses it can be in our nails hey jerry it can be in um you know systemically flowing through the body yes it can be in the digestive tract but you know, it can be a lot of different places. And uh, Brittany just um, put that link down below. If you have not checked out our TikTok page, if you're on TikTok, check it out. We've got tons of videos. Uh, I talk uh, less less time on TikTok. So if you guys are tired of hearing me talk uh, longer on, on Facebook, TikTok, shorter videos as well. Uh, but love to see you guys on there. Check out, we're getting uh, reels set up on, on uh, Instagram as well. Check out our Instagram page also. So, uh, here we go. In. So where where does this candida overgrowth come from? So here's some of the common causes of candida overgrowth and this excess candida. Uh, hey Sharon, good to see you. So. Uh, Antibiotic, broad spectrum antibiotic use orally into the body not only kills off the bad bacteria, so let's say you've got an infection, you've got an ear infection, sinus infection, UTI, whatever it is, it's going to kill off the, the bad stuff, but it's also going to kill off the good stuff. And so, uh, especially in kiddos, especially in women that have had recurrent infections, if you've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics, one, your gut will never be the same even after we go through all this stuff and you probably need to be working on it the rest of your life. But number two is that uh, you, you definitely set things up for this imbalance and for this uh, excess bad bacteria, excess yeast, candida, some of those things. Birth control pills have been shown to uh, uh, cause a, a recurrent UTI in some people. Um, to uh, It may not be the true cause of the candida, but it throws off enough things that that candida can come around. Oral steroids, so if you've taken any prednisone, any type of oral corticosteroid, steroid, um, and, uh, and having any of those come into the body that can definitely throw off a lot of people they'll get thrush they'll get white coated tongue so if you look at your tongue and there's white coating on there really good indication that you might be having some issues there hey jerry thanks for the kind words um, loving the five day class so again we're putting on the five day blood sugar master class right now if you have not signed up for that one if you don't have it um click down below send send us a direct message and Brittany can get you access to those videos uh you're really fun putting that together and this is the first time running that one through so um love having you guys on there cancer if someone's been through cancer treatments especially there's a very good chance that they're going to have candida overgrowth there's going to be good bacteria knocked down so uh, those cancer treatments definitely can do it diabetics people with high blood sugar are going to have more of a potential for oral thrush uh, that sugar is going to allow the the candida to grow it's going to feed it um, those type of diets if somebody's in this higher sugar diet like a diabetic um, they are going to be feeding the candida in their gut and then people with decreased immune system so if you're immunocompromised or you know, suppressed, if you get shingles a lot, if you get strep throat a lot, any of those things, you probably have some candida overgrowth in the body as well. Just because it's not going to be 
um, uh, able to able to suppress that candida. So some of the symptoms that you have candida. Um, Sharon would love access to that class, please. Brittany, can you uh, get a hold of Sharon? Let her uh, let her in on that one. So symptoms: fatigue. If you're tired all the time, if you fall asleep in the afternoon, if you need a nap, if you're just sluggish all day long look to candida. If your moods are off, if you're having anxiety, depression, if you're swinging, look to candida. If you have chronic urinary tract infection, vaginal infections, look to candida. Um, again, if you have a white coating on the tongue, I've posted a lot of videos of these over the years. If I see a good one coming to the office, I'll post it. If you've got that, very good indication that you have candida going on. If you have recurrent sinus infections, that's a good place that candida can hold out. Uh, and there's a good chance that you need to do some oral spraying and kill off some of those. Um, if you have chronic digestive disorders, especially gas, bloating, indigestion, feels like you're pregnant after meals, that candida, that yeast can get fed and get bloated in there as well. If you have chronic brain fog, if you're just like, man, what was I doing? I forget thoughts, any of those things, look to a yeast infection. If you have uh, yeast issues under your skin or under your nails, if you have uh, chronic nail, toenail fungus, things like that, really good indication that you need to do some killing there. Uh, if you have hormone imbalances, good indication that you might have a yeast, bad bacteria, uh, good bacteria imbalance. So here's some things that you can do for your uh, potential yeast infection, but also just um, bad bacteria, gut imbalance, microbiome imbalance, a lot of these different places. So coconut oil is actually very antimicrobial. So coconut oil, uh, if you can take that orally, you can even put it on, on topically, on if you've got on your nails, um, toenails, fingernails, anything like that, you can take uh, and swish it around in your mouth. Let it warm up, swish around your mouth, you can spit it out, swallow it, whatever you want to do there. Uh, oil of oregano, Brittany, if you want to put the, the link down below for that, that oil of oregano that we use, this is my favorite product of all time when we're talking about gut imbalance. We'll use it up to three, three times a day on people, pretty heavy duty dose, knock down the bad stuff, then we bring in the probiotics, then we bring in the good stuff. So that is a great tool that we use through there. Um, clove oil, that's another one you can get that from essential oil companies. Uh, wormwood, another great product uh, through there as well. And, uh, and fermented vegetables, especially after you've killed, killed down a lot of the bad stuff, you can start bringing in good bacteria through those fermented vegetables. Um, MCT oil internally, yes, Marla, that, that is great. Uh, and then what about for athletes' feet? Yeah, same thing. I would, I would address it internally as well as externally. Externally, um, you can put oil of oregano, you can put tea tree oil, um, coconut oil on the, on the athletes' feet, on the toenail fungus, wherever it is, and that's going to be helpful. Um, uh, I was told you cannot fully cure yeast until you detox heavy metals. I also have parasites, which I have detoxed with yeast and mold, but I still don't feel 100%. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, not everybody has heavy metals. So just because somebody has yeast issues does not mean they have heavy metals. So um, I would not agree with that, that you can't, um, that you can't get rid of yeast. You know, but here's the deal. If you go back and allow the things uh, uh, to happen that cause that yeast to get overgrown in the first place, you're going to get yeast again. Um, so for me, I was on three months of antibiotics because I had bullseye tick rings, um, uh, Lyme disease. And so I did three months of antibiotics. My gut will never be the same, but I never had Lyme disease, thankfully. So then on the dietary side, you've got to go into as low sugar, low carb as feasibly possible. And this might take two to four weeks, if not longer, combined with these other things to totally knock it down. Remember, yeast is fed by sugar. So if you are on a high sugar diet, if you're on a vegetarian diet, vegan diet, you are going to be feeding your yeast infection, feeding your, uh, your bad microbiome. So we've got to go as hardcore as possible. No sugar, no grains, no starch, um, no fruit for two to four weeks. It's pretty strict. It's pretty hard. Um, and yet that's how we ultimately kick down that uh, bad, bad bacteria, bad yeast, bad microbiome, knock it down, build up the good stuff, and then you can, you can really
really move on and your gut's going to be in a lot better place. So if you've got questions, click those down below. Love seeing you guys. Um, you remember, no matter what you're diagnosed with, no matter what symptoms you have, there's got to be reasons why. And that's why you dig deep. If you need help, if you're not getting the solutions, uh, DM us. Uh, click, click any of the links that we have set up for a discovery call, free discovery call. We'll sit down with you, see what's going on, and let you know if we might be a good place to start to get you your health back. All right, guys, take care. Have a great day.